The Prophet ﷺ had a special relationship with young people, and he cultivated with them an enthusiastic approach to learning about faith, being given an opportunity to ask questions and be asked questions by him, and be given a platform to be able to stand up and carry forward the banner of truth when others may be seemingly more capable than them. The Prophet ﷺ was a builder of leaders, was a person who consolidated Iman in the hearts of others by allowing them to demonstrate its practice. And of the greatest interest he had ﷺ was looking after young people and their study of faith and the uh, ability to practice it in a safe space where they were given an opportunity to speak their concerns and ask him questions directly. Some of the most moving examples of this that I wish to speak to you about kindness of the Prophet ﷺ to younger people, not just people in his household or in his family, but young people in general in the Medina of the Prophet ﷺ can be exemplified in a number of hadith. One of the most prominent quotes that you will find from a young individual, 10 years old or so, who lived with the Prophet ﷺ and served him voluntarily as somebody who was his aide is Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu wa arda. And the Prophet ﷺ, Anas ibn Malik, he's referred to as the one who would carry the sandals or the shoe of the Prophet ﷺ. That's seen as a great honor. Could you imagine when the Prophet would come to make wudu or remove his shoe or that Anas was the one who was there delegated the task of being his personal aide who would assist him in those uh, important and private sessions. Anas radiallahu anhu, because he was a young child as well, he was able to enter into the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the laws of hijab and be able to experience some of the things that other people weren't able to see from the elders amongst the Sahaba, which gives him a great vantage point. And one of the qadr of Allah for Anas ibn Malik is that he would live many years to the year of a hundred plus years old being able to teach the sunnah that he had witnessed of the Prophet Muhammad One moving example is Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu doesn't speak about his own interaction, but also about the interaction of other children with the Prophet In Sahih al-Bukhari, there's this famous hadith of a young man, a young child named Abu Umair. Now Abu Umair, you may be surprised, hey, how come they gave him the nickname Abu, father of something? Well, that's a custom in the Arabic language that you would give the hope you have for your child as a nickname. So the concept of Umair means Umr, comes from life. So his parents, they would say Abu Umair, meaning the one we wish to have a long, fruitful life. That was the way they used to have hope for their child, especially in those old days in the past where the children would would pass away at a young age from infections and other reasons and illnesses that were then incurable for them. So Abu Umair was four, five, six years old and he was a young child who used to come to the masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this Abu Umair is the brother of Anas ibn Malik. So Anas ibn Malik, he says, the Prophet, this is how he begins the hadith. He said, and this is the riwayah of Imam Muslim. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the noblest character, had the best husnul khuluq. Nobody had a better character than him. What's his evidence of this? He said, I had a brother, my young brother, my little brother, who was younger than me. I was 10, he was five or six years old. We used to call him Abu Umair. We wanted him to have a long life. And my young brother, uh, he was just, had just finished being weaned, meaning my mother had just finished breastfeeding him. So he was about two, three years old, maybe a little bit older, and it's a subjective time in that, in that era. He says that the Messenger of Allah came to visit him in our house to pay him respect and aza when his pet bird passed away. I want you to hear this hadith. Abu Umair, he used to have a small nu'ayr, which means it was a little sparrow that he used to have a little cage for it. He used to feed it and give it water and he used to enjoy its company and it used to love him. And this bird, it passed away, it died. And he woke up one morning and his young little bird, his little nu'ayr had passed away. And Abu Umair as a young child, two, three, four years old, he was devastated. And this is his first experience of hearing anything about life or death. 
And when the Prophet ﷺ hears from Anas ibn Malik, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, my brother's bird, it passed away. The Prophet said, hey, let's get up and go pay him a visit. Now, this is something that is uncanny. It's an incredible experience that lasts in the life of Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik sees so many things from the Prophet ﷺ. But when he wants to teach us about his noble character, he speaks about a moment that you and I may not see uh, replica- uh, replicated in our household. The Prophet wasallam, the messenger of God, the one who's given a scripture as a final testament, leaves off all of the business affairs of his ummah, everything that he's dealing with with the people of Quraysh, everything he's dealing with with the hostilities of those uh, tribes that are surrounding them, all of those things, he leaves it and he says, hey, there's a young child who needs to be comforted, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he goes and visits Anas' home and he asks to speak to Abu Umair. And this whole hadith, all it has is one statement from the Prophet ﷺ. Anas, he says, the Prophet asked, he said, Ya Abu Umair, ماذا فعل النعير? Oh Abu Umair, tell me what happened with your bird. Subhanallah. Now, uh, uh, Imam Ibn Hajr, Imam Ibn Hajr, who is the one who explains Sahih al-Bukhari, he lists more than a hundred fiqh jurisprudence, laws, and rules and regulations from this particular hadith. There's more than a hundred lessons that in our sharia were deduced from that one statement of the Prophet and this one incident, such as the legality of owning a pet, a young child owning a pet, being able to restrict a bird from flying away, making a bird a pet, feeding it in your home, looking after it and that it doesn't pollute your home, it's not najis, Uh, You know, all of these things, all of these interconnected things that relate to the ahkam, the rules and regulations of our lifestyle. But then it also has the spiritual, emotional and psychological benefits of the Prophet addressing a young child about life and death. It makes him the noblest of people in that he is a person who in his time did what nobody else would have done. Nobody else would consider it. And the Prophet ﷺ allows this young child to weep in front of him, to feel pain in front of him, to feel vulnerable in front of him, to speak about loss and to reassure him about it. And you will find that other people would ask the Prophet ﷺ about things that they loved. You know, a man asked the Prophet ﷺ and he, he was a farmer, he's from the Ansar, right? He's, he, his life is looking after his date trees and the, his livestock, he's a farmer. And he says to the Prophet ﷺ, in Jannah, will I be allowed to farm? Will I be allowed to have pets and animals? You know, sometimes our children ask us these, will I be able to do these things that I enjoy in this life? And the Prophet ﷺ reassures him, and yes, and when you plant in Jannah, how beautiful is the orchard that is planted that you are able to look after it there. Subhanallah, the generosity and the kindness of the Prophet ﷺ extends and radiates. And this would be something that was seen by the young and the old. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he himself, he says that when the Prophet would or ask me to do something and I would forget or I get distracted because I'm playing, Wallahi man taharani, I swear to you by my Lord Almighty, not once did he humiliate me. Not once did he raise his voice at me. Not once did he raise his hand against anybody except in battle that was ordained upon him by Allah in defense of truth and faith. The Prophet was a communicator with young people who when he would pass by, when he was on his camel, or when he was on his horse, and there was a young group of children who were playing in Al-Madina, he would stop his journey and ask and order the camel to sit down on the ground, which in, in itself is a major task. You know, people who ride camels, they once you're up, you're up. You don't want to get up and down. It's not like opening a car door. And he would ask, order that the camel be seated, and he would get off. وَكَانَ يُصَاحِفُ sibya. He would shake the hands of the young children, the young men, and he would shake their hands hand to hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were moments that were recorded in the seerah that as the Prophet is making wudu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some of the young children, they gathered around him. They're looking and watching him making his wudu. 
And we learn how to make the wudu not just from the senior Sahaba, but also from the younger ones like Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu arda and others. And they're watching the Prophet make wudu. And as he's making wudu, he sees them. So he takes a little bit of water without them expecting it and he splashes it at them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one riwayah, he, you know, he uh, pushed out water from his mouth towards them, you know, sprayed them with a little bit of water sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other riwayat, as he was eating watermelon, he would take some of the seeds and he would throw it at them to remind, to get their attention and to play with them and to show them amusement. And they would be delighted with the attention of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.